for this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create some basic flow charts just using an online program called draw.io. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is open up a web browser and navigate to draw.io. And from there, we're going to need to do some very basic setup before we can begin. One of the first things you're going to have to select is how do you want to save your diagrams, either through Google Drive, OneDrive, or basically to your device. Once you select this option, that's going to be your default, unless you go back and change that um, at an earlier time. So we're going to go ahead and select device for uh, this demonstration. And from here, we're going to have an option to create a new program or open an existing program. We're going to stick with creating a new program for this demonstration. Once you get into your diagram, you're going to have a choice through several different templates that you would like to select from. Uh, you can also use a blank diagram, which is what we are going to use. And you also have the ability to change the file name before starting. So that kind of gets you away from having all those untitled diagrams saved onto your device. So we're just going to go ahead and rename this as flowchart design for this demonstration. And we can go ahead and create that. Once we create it, you can see that we have a name of flowchart design. You have a general tab. You have some other tabs down the left-hand browser that you can select from. And you also have an editing toolbar down on the right-hand side. So for this, we're going to look at creating just a very basic flowchart. Uh, basically, we're just going to create a conditional statement that either statement one or statement true can be uh, true, true or false statements. And then from there, we'll kind of start and stop the actual flowchart. But this is meant to just kind of get you used to using the tools and how to do some very basic formatting within draw.io. So one of the first things we're going to look at is creating a start symbol. And in order to create a start symbol, we're going to go ahead and use an oval. So what we're going to want to do first is in our general tab, grab our oval and bring it into the program. Once we bring it into the program, you do have the ability to adjust the size um, or you can simply leave it alone depending on what your need is for this. Now, I like to do a lot of formatting to my shapes before I get into the flowchart because it does make it a lot easier. Um, when you start duplicating things, you're not doing things over and over again. So for my oval, I can go ahead and double click and I could type in whatever I would like. In this case, we're gonna call it start. And as you can see, that start is pretty small. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on it. And over on my palette on the right-hand side, I'm just gonna change that font to about 30. And that's gonna give me a nice uh, larger font, easy to read. The other thing I can do with this is click on that oval and change the actual color so that not everything is the same. So I'm going to stick with a nice solid orange, and you can see that the font actually de defaults back to white, makes it nice and easy to read. Now I have a nice starting point, okay, and I'm also going to need a stopping point at some point. So I could simply click on that and copy and paste, and we're going to bring that down here. And if I double click, we can go ahead and just edit the text. And now I don't have to worry about it. So later on, wherever I need to put my stop, I can just simply move it around the screen and I should be good to go. So the next thing I want to do is create a condition. Using our condition symbol, we're going to use a rhombus. The rhombus in draw.io does come in pretty small. And when you're typing in text, it can be very hard to read. So I do like to go ahead and resize my rhombus so that I do have the ability to go ahead and add some more text because usually you're asking some sort of question. So with my rhombus, um, we're just going to ask a question, is the condition true? And with that, we can go ahead and double click. And you can even use that little slider to kind of adjust until you can get to a font that you like and that it fits in there. So you can see I can keep going until I get to a point where that's pretty good. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and click on the shape and let's find a color. I'm going to use a lighter green for this. I do like my conditions to stand out and I'm going to drag that until it's right below the start. Now the easy way to connect your start to your condition is by simply clicking on the start button. And if you go ahead and hover below it, you'll see this, these arrows that'll pop up. So when you click on that arrow, anything that is close enough will automatically attach. That does allow me to move my condition around the screen and have the arrow follow along with it. Um, later on, I'm going to demonstrate how you can actually use the arrow tool to be brought in 
and uh, you can kind of do some other things with that as well. Now, once my condition is being read, we're going to have two statements, and these are basic commands. So for the basic commands, we're going to bring in a rectangle. And for this, we're just going to go ahead and call this statement one. And again, I can double click on the font and we can go ahead and adjust that to fit that. Well, we'll call that about 25 font that should stand, fit in there. Um, if it doesn't, just simply go ahead and drag that box out and you can make it as large or as small as you want. But that's a pretty good size right there. Again, I'm going to go ahead and click on that, give it another color, and use a lighter orange for my basic commands. And again, we're going to need two statements, so I can just simply copy and paste. And let's go back in and edit the text. So now we have statement one and statement two. So for my statements, we're going to basically have two different things here. Um, is it true or is it false? If it's true, we want to have a yes statement. So I'm going to grab my text for my general tab. And I'm going to bring that over here, type in yes. And I'm going to go ahead and double click. Let's make that bold. Let's make that stand out a little bit, maybe about a 25 font. And we're going to change the font color for this one to be green. And we can click apply. And now you have a yes. I can duplicate that again by control C and then just control V to paste it in there. And I'm going to double click and we'll change that to no. And again, I can double click and go ahead over and change the font color to red. So now we have basically our two statements. If statement, well, if our, my condition is met, then I'm gonna follow the yes. If my statement is not met, I can simply go ahead and follow my no. So we'll bring that over. Now we need to find a way to connect my true statement to statement one. And we can do this by simply grabbing an arrow and you'll see it brings it in. It has an end point and a beginning point and it also has this middle point where if you bring it, It'll start to bend and create more breakpoints so that you can kind of manipulate those arrows a little more. Um, in this case, we're just simply going to take that endpoint and we're going to come up to my condition until we get that green dot. And that's going to lock it into that endpoint. And we can do the same thing to statement one, connect it where you would like. And now, just like our conditional, it's kind of stuck to that statement. I'm going to go back and click on the arrow and use that middle break point to kind of bend that arrow a little bit and make it look nice and neat. And now once you have statement one is met, I'm going to take that yes statement, kind of put it in the middle here, and I'm going to do the same thing here for statement two. Grab that endpoint, attach the green circle, and the same thing on statement two. And I can take that middle point again and move it. And then I can slide my condition over so that it is met. One of the things I will say about Draw.io, if you do not click directly on it, um, you do tend to get arrows all over the place. So you do want to use that Control Z if you're using a PC to kind of back out of that. So the last thing we want to look at is how do we attach both of these to my stop? And there's a couple different ways. One of the easiest ways is just to do the simple arrow and bring it in. And this is what I typically have my students do is grab it to statement one and we can bring that to the side of the stop get that green uh, that green circle and again bend that arrow and then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing for statement two um, you can get fancy with this and have the arrow start to connect to one another but i feel like sometimes you're spending more time manipulating the arrows than actually working with the software so you can make this as detailed as you want you can add pictures you can add a bunch of different things to this, as well as changing the paper size, um, saving this with a transparent background. But it becomes really nice when you're doing presentations to have some type of formal, formal uh, flow charting done, rather than just drawing it out on paper. Draw.io is nice and easy. It is quick. Um, you do have the ability to simply go ahead and just download or export that as a PNG or a JPEG if you would like. Um, even PDFs, they're great for presentations. So very easy software to use, takes a little bit of time to play around with, but very, very nice software when designing flowcharts.